Ladies and gentlemen, happy fortunes. Okay, big day for us. Big day. Um, it's seeming to get bigger and bigger every single year, and that's kind of interesting. I think it's become more and more considered a national holiday, and not only national, an international holiday. Um, the UK. Uh, celebrates it. There's this big celebration in Hyde Park there, which apparently this year is different because the police have said that they won't be doing any arrests, which typically they do do arrests. So um, the idea of 420 has kind of morphed over the years, ever since the 70s, to become something very, very potent for pot smokers. And there are a lot of reasons behind it. There are a lot of myths behind it. And I thought I'd kind of dive into why this holiday ever started in the first place. And I'm sure a lot of us know the reasons for it. I'm sure a lot of us have heard kind of the origin story of 420, but it basically all starts with a group of kids in Marin County, California. Um, that's right outside of San Francisco. I, oh God, I, I said Marin County, it's Marin County. I say Marin because I'm from Philly and uh, that's kind of how we would pronounce it there. Marin County, they were uh, just a bunch of potheads in the area who had heard a story of an old coast guard who apparently had had created a pot field somewhere in the area and they would basically meet up every day at 420 after school um, they would get really high and then they would go searching for this pot field and this would be kind of a tradition that they would start and and then continue on and the idea of meeting at 4 at 420 420 p.m. every day and then doing this kind of thing they started to use it as code so nobody knew what they were talking about so they would say 420 in front of their parents in front of their friends in front of the school um, and nobody would know however over the years since they continue to use it so much it kind of got out there and it got out there in one specifically big way which was that one of the older brothers of these kids who met was friends with the legendary Phil Lesh of the Grateful Dead and the Grateful Dead when Phil Lesh um, heard about this he brought it to the Grateful Dead and over the many many years of the Grateful Dead touring around the country they kind of appropriated the term for themselves and and gave it a much bigger circulation than just around Marin County and so that became kind of the origin story for this this association of, of the time 420 with uh, marijuana and for the date April 20th to become a holiday for marijuana, for all of these things, just because a group of kids were just looking for a pot field and actually never found the pot field. So I found that to be an interesting origin story. Um, there are a lot of myths behind it. There's one specific one with the Bob Dylan song. Uh, it's the one that I played in the beginning of this video. The song itself is called Rainy Day Women Number 12 and Number 35. Um, it's a kind of a silly name, but it's a great album, Blonde on Blonde. And he talks about, at one point in, in the song, he talks about um, everybody must get stoned. And, but he's talking about stoning, like people throwing stones. Anyway, the idea what came from number 12 and number 35, when you multiply 12 and 35, you get 420. So there became this whole conspiracy theory that this was the beginning of 420. It's not the case, it's just a fun coincidence. That's a really fun coincidence, but still not the case. And of course it is Adolf Hitler's birthday. It's also my friend Madison Strover's birthday, so happy birthday, Madison. That, of course, has nothing to do with 420 or the marijuana stuff. But again, a strange coincidence. 420 has become a very, very um, interesting date in our history books. Of course, the Columbine shooting happened on 420. That was more targeted to the Adolf Hitler birthday, but still, it's become a date that um, more and more historical events are happening on or within. For instance, we have just this year, um, although not planned right on 420, and I'm not sure why they didn't do this, but on 421, New Jersey will start sale of cannabis. That's a big, big milestone. Um, they've been trying to do this for a long time now because they legalized way back in 2020. And so finally, April 21st, they're going to have the sales of marijuana. So that's great. Anyway, we'll likely see more things happening throughout 
today. I'm gonna go to a comedy show tonight, that'll be fun. And I hope we all celebrate in our own ways the, uh, the wonderful holiday at 420. So that's kind of what I wanted to focus on today. Uh, we have one story about Marco Rubio saying that he doesn't want cannabis legalized because he thinks that uh, cannabis is a gateway drug, obviously. That's what everyone thinks on the, on, on the conservative side. And he also believes that um, illicit marijuana has fentanyl in it. It's laced with fentanyl. And this was kind of one thing that I was concerned with when there were stories about fentanyl laced marijuana out there. Um, every once in a while, we get one from a uh, local police division sending out a report saying, be careful with illicit marijuana. There might be fentanyl laced in it because they've, they've gotten reports of uh, overdoses. And most times in this case, it comes out later that there was no fentanyl laced in any of this marijuana. It was a scare that, that people thought that there might be because there were overdoses happening. I can't explain the overdoses. I can't explain that the very, very few instances where there might have been fentanyl laced in marijuana, but the large percentage of these cases have not been true. And so it's unfortunate that now we have politicians out there kind of spouting these statements as if they're fact and they're really not. And Marco Rubio shouldn't be doing this. And uh, I hope that this is not going to become a strategy that more and more Republicans start spouting. But anyway, that's the other story and uh, it's 420. So go enjoy yourself. Happy 420. <laughs> oh, oh, oh.